See, as you can see, the more you fuck around, the more you're going to find out. And also, if you stay down here and you never fuck around, you'll never find out. Now, unlike game one, in game two, Tyrese Halliburton was a little bit more aggressive. But these playoffs for Tyrese will kind of expose what kind of point guard he really is, which is a pass first guy. He's not necessarily a volume scorer, but he's definitely showing much more aggression than he did in game one. Now, plays like this early on is what I mean when I say Tyrese is a pass first point guard. First of all, Pascal sets the screen and I'm surprised with their habits early on in the season. They normally did what the Knicks did to the 76ers later on in this series, which is set screens way up high to get their guard going downhill. That's what they did to avoid crowded spaces for Jalen Brunson which he experienced in game one and two against the 76ers. But unlike Jalen Brunson, Tyrese loves to pick up his dribble. He's not necessarily a person who has tight handles, but the Indiana Pacers are designed to have a bunch of shooters around him. Nemhard right here, this plays for him. He's gonna get a flare screen right here behind Josh Hart from Miles Turner. And it's a perfect play right here to Nemhard as Miles Turner is even pointing but he misses open shot. But this is the flaw with this team is that things are not necessarily designed for Tyrese to be a volume scorer. He's really a pass first guy. That's why in the beginning of the season, he was having those games, breaking assist records, just getting 20 assists for like four games in a row or whatever it was. But that is his archetype. He is a pass first guy. And the fundamentals of the Pacers is to surround him with a bunch of shooters. Guys who are not afraid to run in transition and pop a three i.e. Obi Toppin. But Tyrese right here, he's not really a face-up player. Hartenstein and Josh Hart gives him a lot of problems. He can't even beat them off the dribble. Hell, he can't even shake off Hartenstein, which is one of the benefits of the Knicks right here, having a big man who has a lot of mobility moving side to side. But Pete TJ McConnell, he, now he's inserted in the lineup real early. 620, real early because Nimhart is already missing his shots. But TJ at the same time is not a three-point shooter. He's a mid-range guy. So that's why we haven't really seen Tyrese and TJ to close out these games. But we're going to see Tyrese acknowledge TJ and not necessarily still give him the ball. You see, he's wide open right there. He acknowledges him, but he overlooks him. That's not his range. He's not in range yet. And he just settles for the shot against Hart. But once again, he can't shake Hartenstein. So the Knicks having a mobile center is presenting a lot of conundrums for Tyrese. He's not really a face-up guy. He's a guy who gets open through screens and he penetrates, hits you with a couple of floaters from the inside of the paint and just a threat of him shooting those floaters, he can kick out to guys in the corners. Right here, once again, we're seeing the conundrums. <laughs> Can't shake off Hartenstein. And now he looks in the direction of McConnell, who's not really a three-point shooter. He's not really a spot-up guy. And Tyrese does not like dribbling in tight spaces. So no reason to really give up his dribble here. Seven seconds left on the clock, but he does not like these tight spaces to dribble in. See, Brunson is real comfortable in here. Brunson doesn't give up his dribble necessarily unless somebody's open. But a lot of the praise Tyrese has gotten early on this season was a little bit prematurely. He's not really a guard who's going to average 28 points per game and 12 assists. It's more like 12 assists and perhaps 22 points a game or even lower than that. It wouldn't shock me. But him having numbers to be the best guard to start in an all-star game, I don't think so. Now right here, TJ is still on the floor with Tyrese. And now he gets to switch, a nice little mismatch. So you got Miles Turner on Brunson and Hartenstein on TJ. But TJ is not going to really pull up over Hartenstein like that. He does not really have that in his arsenal. But right here, the Pacers do take advantage of the mismatch with Brunson. You see this mismatch here, now Hart has to double, leaving Tyrese open. But for the most part, the pairing of these two on the court, it's not necessarily gonna turn out the way we think it is, unless they really execute on a high level off the switches on a play like this, because Tyrese can spot up and shoot. But the same thing can't be said for TJ McConnell from long distance. So again, we're seeing right now the combination of TJ and Tyrese. As Tyrese right here is going to hit TJ with a wide open three. 
wide open he has all the ample time in the world perfect screen right here kind of walks into that and it's just not tj's bag all right so once again the name of the game is to surround tyrese halliburton with a bunch of shooters and we're gonna see tj mcconnell right here wide open <laughs> wide open this is you couldn't draw it up any better than this but this is why lineups with him and TJ don't really work out. Now, right here, Halliburton makes the Knicks pay for their miscommunication. As we see Hartenstein, he's going to go to Halliburton, but multiple guys are collapsing right now. Naismith is dragging. Nemhart is moving. Everybody is, is moving off ball. Check out all these crosses right here. Nemhart is making his way to the corner. Naismith just came from up here. Collapsing. Miles Turner is collapsing. You got Ben Shepard that's been killing the Knicks all throughout the first quarter, trying to make himself available. Multiple things are happening right here. And check out Hartenstein. It's going to show that there's a miscommunication. See? Two on one right here. Halliburton makes him pay. This unit right here had a lot of issues defensively in this quarter. The rim protection was poor and the recovery on the switches as well as in transition was a little questionable. And the Pacers without Tyrese to begin this quarter was already mounting a comeback on this same unit. Now right here, you figured a lineup with OG, Hartenstein, Dante, and McBride be more on point defensively with their rotations. But as we're gonna see right here, Miles Turner draws up a flare screen for Tyrese to make his way to getting a three-point shot. And he's going to utilize the attention that he gets off this screen for another pass to Turner. Where's the rotations? As soon as those two made those rotations, that was cue for Dante or McBride to step up. Let's take a look at that again. Look at Turner sets the flare screen. Okay, Josh Hart goes over the screen. Now Hartenstein is also there. That is that is a cue right there. Oh, that's kind of a nice little no look pass by um, Tyrese, but that was cute for somebody to step up right there. And just a little bit too late by McBride. But again, the rotations along with the rim protection was a little bit uh, shaky with this lineup. And once again, even with Tyrese out in the beginning of the quarter, that's really where the Pacers kind of started mounting up an actual lead. So Knicks right here in transition. And this is Tyrese's bag. He has the open shooter in the corner. He's going to wait it out. Notice how he looks in the direction of Miles Turner. This is really Tyrese's bag. It's not about him scoring a bunch of points. This is where he really gets it off. So he knows he's not going to give it to Turner. He's going to give it right here. He knows it already. He's just weighing it out. Completely catches the Knicks defense lacking. That's why the Pacers need to put guys who could finish around Tyrese. If he got him, he could average 20 assists if he wanted to every night. But this right here is the A1 skill of Halliburton, not necessarily him scoring off the dribble. Once again, we're seeing the off-ball movement surrounded around Tyrese. Pascal tries to go for a screen here. Naismith does a little cross action right here in between that screen. And he's going to be the one wide open. So once again, right here, we're going to see the miscommunication on the switches. Tyrese is just eating off of that. Most of his 22 first half points did not come off of him creating off the dribble or just any type of face-up game. And just one more example, right before the half, we see Tyrese actually run back to the ball. So this screen right here by Pascal is going to be an instant kind of go screen. See, so he rolls instantly. So now it's a two versus one on Burks. And this is how they're going to get the open shot. See, Pascal still rolling. Burks has to stunt in. And now Nemhard is the open shooter. So now taking a look at some of the second half defense on the Pacers. With Tyrese Halliburton, we're going to see some of his characteristics here. 
In the playoffs, as these games in the second half get tighter, pressure begins to mount and players begin to display their real characteristics. As I stated before, Tyrese, his normal habits is to be a playmaker, is to be a passer, a guy to get guys open. As right here, he passes up an open shot one time. And again, you see, he had a driving lane. He could have put the ball low to the ground, use those long strides and possibly find Obi on the weak side corner. But instead, once again, he was open there for a split second, but I don't blame him. But this is his real habit is getting guys open. Now, right here in transition, this is just a quick FYI. Check out Tyrese right here in the transition, just his positioning, because I just want to add on to the fact that this is why the Pacers are not really going to win this series with Tyrese being their main guy just him being their primary scorer but in reality he's a setup man and you add on the fact that he has poor positioning defensively and at times he does not even display the effort to even want to defend but check out right here this is just poor positioning poor awareness but for the Pacers they're gonna have to find another co-star to put along with them and if they're smart they're gonna have to find a 1a to put above him because just being poor defensively, while at this very moment being a passive scorer, which your team really needs you to be that guy, it's not really going to work. Now, right here, I love this from Dante. The physicality as he tries to hedge right here, tries to get in front of Tyrese. And it just bothers him, man. I'm telling you, the physicality of the playoffs, it's definitely a different animal. But Dante has done a great job on Tyrese. Dante and Josh Hart. But particularly Dante. Now, this right here got to be a rare sighting. Halliburton actually beats Hartenstein off the dribble and finds the open shooter, TJ McConnell. And remember how I said in the first half, he is not a three-point shooter at all. As once again, he's going to pass up another open three. Because that's not really his bag. And again, that's why it's a limiting thing to have Halliburton and TJ on the floor at the same time, particularly at the end of the fourth. Both of them like to handle the ball. And I'm not sure if the Pacers really want TJ McConnell being the one to facilitate the offense at the end of these games. But it seems like the Pacers rather have the ball in Tyrese's hands at the end of these games and create offense off of the attention that he gets. That seems to be the more comfortable route for them because TJ is not going to draw no double team and he's not going to blow by anybody. So, so right here, Josh Hart tries to get in front of the screen, trying to guess which way it's going to come from. Tyrese sticks with it. Now one-on-one -on -one with Hartenstein. Let's see if he can shake him off. And check out the finishing ability. Once again, gives up his dribble. It's kind of early to give up the dribble. Brunson does not even stunt in for him to give up that dribble, but he still does. It's a natural motion for him to do that, but Tyrese is not going to finish through the contact. Tries to put up a floater. Once again, him being a star, notice how he doesn't try to jump into any type of contact. He sort of chucks this up as he's jumping away. He's kind of leaning towards this direction when he kind of jumps, see? He's leaning away from the contact. The league, in a way, is in a weird spot. They're promoting a lot of guys that are not necessarily having any on-court impact. And so far, this year's playoffs has exposed a lot of that. So far in this series, you know, the defense of Dante DiVincenzo and Tyrese Halliburton just harassing him. It's been A1, really underrated thing. So as the Knicks fight through their switches, this is one of the rare few times we've seen Tyrese actually get to his spot. This shot right here is Tyrese's bread and butter right here. This floater anywhere around these areas. But it's been rare to see him get to this bag. So with OG exiting the game and Precious in the lineup, we're going to see a mistake that a lot of young teams make. And this might be Tyrese's fault. He should have waved off this screen. You got Precious following behind Pascal. Of course, you got this open space right here for him to operate in. But check it out. There's no advantage to this screen. There is no advantage. We all know Pascal is not necessarily going to be making a play from out here. And in reality, when Pascal was making his way up, Halliburton should have called him off and then called for Naismith. See, right there, he got Brunson right on him. That's who he should have called up for the screen. See, no advantage. 
But again, this is a guard that's kind of going through his progressions and he's going to learn. He's going to learn from these things. But there is no advantage to that screen that was just ran. You got Hartenstein right there. In case he tries to post up Dante, there's no real advantage there. And this is a scenario we've seen Jalen Brunson master in the last series going up against the 76ers. He would wave off Hartenstein and then ask for a pick for whoever Tobias Harris was guarding or whoever Tyrese Maxey was guarding. Brunson throughout that series was constantly doing that, just telling Hartenstein to go back, know you. He was hunting for his mismatches or his favorable matchups because the length of Nick Batoon and Kelly Oubre was bothering him all series long and his favorite matchups was definitely Tobias Harris and of course the smaller Tyrese Maxey.